Live from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2019. Brought to you by Veeam. We're back, this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here in Miami. This is a wrap of Veeam on 2019. Two days of coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host Peter Burris. This is our third year covering uh, Veeam on. We started in New Orleans. Uh, we've seen you know, Veeam go from what they called at this show, act one to act two. And we talked two years ago about you know, two, uh, the, our first Veeam on, about the ascendancy of Veeam being so tightly tied to the rise of virtualization. And now we heard this year, act two being cloud, multi-cloud. And we heard a number of announcements that are in support of that. We're going to talk about that, but Peter, there were three key announcements this week. One was uh, the, the billion dollar you know, milestone. They actually you know, it finally hit a billion dollars. They've been talking about it for a while. It's now official. Billion dollars on a, on a trailing 12 month basis. Uh, they're a profitable company, Veeam. And a uh, focused billion dollars. Yeah. I think that's really they're important. Yeah, very focused. I mean, they do some M&A, but not a lot of M&A. And that's because of NIH. I mean, you know, these guys, they trust themselves it's to write simple. code. It's also, yeah. it's also sustain that simple value proposition. Right, and that's a, I mean, a fundamental dogma, I think, I think it's fair to say. Um, we, we heard the announcement of the, the, the With Veeam a API infrastructure, which, which is key, we're going to talk about that. We've, I think there were two companies they announced uh, partnerships with, um, Nutanix with Mine and Exagrid, both taking advantage of that. There, there will be others. Ken Ringdahl just told us, you know, maybe 10 to 12. It's not going to be an enormous number. At least for secondary storage. Yeah, but, and, but that'll knock down a, a large portion of the infrastructure market. Uh, and then the Veeam Availability Orchestrator version two, which allows you to do fast backups, uh, recover from, from backups uh, without having to go to a replicated you know, offsite and some other capabilities they call the dynamic documentation and automating testing and some DevOps capabilities. So, you know, the people seem pretty excited about that. It wasn't a sea of announcements like you see at some of these things, which I think Peter talks to the degree of focus that you were just mentioning. You know, they're not about you know, bragging rights on the number of announcements that they can make. You know, it's really all about extending that platform. A lot of incremental announcements. Ratmir told us not a big roadmap company, even though he did show a roadmap today, but the roadmap he showed was a lot of near-term functional improvements. So very function rich, you know, the, the tagline of it, it just works. But um, let's see, I think this is the first time you and I have done Veeamon together. First time I've been here. Your impressions. Uh, I, look, I love wandering the halls and talking to the actual attendees and seeing what they have to say. So I spent about an hour, hour and a half just doing some work in one of the hallways here. Uh, and one of the reasons I do that is because it's an opportunity to hear what the attendees and the customers are talking about and what's important to them. You go to a lot of these shows and everybody's buzzing about one or another product announcement. You go here and everybody's talking about the problems that they're solving. And I think that one of the reasons why we didn't have this frenzy of product announcements like we have in so many other places, because the focus is, because a lot of companies want the focus to be on them. And I think what we heard here, or what I heard here, was somewhat different was, Again, customers trying to solve the problems and Veeam creating an opportunity for them to talk in terms of some of the new directions and some of the new products are being, uh, are being introduced, but the focus stayed on the customer and the problems that they're trying to solve. And that's, that's what, to my mind, that's what successful companies focus on. Yeah, and, and um, I come back to this notion of the with Veeam, the whole API integration, cloud, hybrid cloud, the edge, Veeam wants to be, and they've laid, they laid this vision out, you know, certainly last year and even started the, the year before, of, of essentially being that, that, that backup capability, uh, data protection capability across wherever your data lives, you know, on-prem, in the cloud. Now, they really are focused on, on backup and data protection. They even say backup's where it starts. A lot of other companies like, don't even use the term backup. No, it's not about backup, it's about data management and, and data protection. Um, so it's interesting that Veeam is really focused on, on backup, and when you do what you did and talk to the customers, what are you using Veeam for? Backup, 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 backup. And so, so they're not over-rotating to that vision. Now, many of their competitors are going hard after that and doing some great, great marketing. So the competitive dynamics are very interesting now. You got Cohesity, you got Rubrik, 
doing really well um, with positioning as a modern architecture. And, and, and Veeam, definitely not a legacy company, their, their business is growing. You've got, you've got Commvault, you've got Dell EMC, uh, Veritas, IBM, you know, trying to hit single digit growth, trying not to decline. I mean, IBM in particular declined and then and, and really had to do a deal with Catalogic to stop Veeam from eating its market share. That's really what that deal was all about. You saw uh, Dell EMC kind of take its eye off the ball when it merged with, with Dell, with EMC. You know, it was the leader in, in purpose-built backup appliances. Um, it's made some announcements recently to try to get, you know. Yeah, it's got some really good stuff. Back in the game, right? So, you know, you don't ever count those guys out. Com Commvault's approached it differently. They've got a large install base. Uh, you know, Veritas went through private equity and so they had some, some other challenges. But again, they're investing. And so, it's a big market. You know, people are going to go fight hard for it and then, and then with, with the outside funding that's come in, it's really up the game. Now, a lot of that funding is going to go to promotion. Um, which again comes back to your point about focused R&D. Really, really important to focus R&D on things that customers want that are going to solve a business problem. So if you go back, and just to, just to take your segmentation, and we can kind of look at it in a couple of perhaps simple ways. You've got, you've got, you've got Veeam and companies like Veeam who saw the whole virtualization and the need to do a better job of supporting and uh, protecting and, and, and replicating and backing up virtualized resources, all hitting the market pretty hard. And then you had the Dell EMCs and a lot of the other companies that you mentioned trying to sustain or keep pace with those guys. And then you have the new guys, the Druvas and whatnot. We're talking about just cross-cloud, multi-cloud backup. On top of that, you have, and something we talked about with a couple of the guests, the security guys are looking at this and saying, Wait a minute. You know, data is data, and protection and security are going to be increasingly difficult to separate because data is going to move, and I have to be able to move security with the data. It's going to be an inevitability. It's we're talking about a cloud that allows us to more do more distribution of data because we're going to do more distribution of work, and the security is going to have to move from the data. So the security guys are going to get in this, the networking guys are going to be asking questions about the opportunity, you got the old guard who's more focused on devices and managing and backing up devices, trying to get back in, you got the new guys who are saying, let's, let's lead the, the, uh, the act two before you know, the Veeams get there. It's going to be an extremely complex market, but all of it's going to boil down to this simple fact. I'm going to distribute data in response to the work that needs to be performed and how am I going to manage the digital assets that I have to make that easy so that it doesn't explode. And all of these companies at some point, kind of the next phase of this is going to be, I'm protecting data but can I turn it into a digital asset? So here's what I saw. I saw Veeam talking about the idea of, you know what, we're going to protect locally. I'll suggest that over the course of the next couple of years, it's going to be, we're going to do you know, data asset management with protection, where the, where the actual act of protecting it is similar to the act of defining it as an asset. So being able to you know, use a, 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 a snapshot for a lot of different uses, already happening now. But adding services, you know, a consistent set of services on top of that, through with Veeam and other resources that allow them to do that. And then move more of that, what's today regarded as replication function, into that protection side of things. Mm -hmm. A lot more support for locally, because that's where the services are going to become, having the services or not having the services is really going to be uh, an essential question because we're going to move more of this data out to where the work's going to be performed. Well, and we often talk about customers having to place bets, but, but the, the, the vendors are having to place bets uh, as well. They're obviously betting on multi-cloud, but, but juxtapose, for example, what Veeam's doing, and it was interesting to hear Ken Ringdahl, how he answered your question about whether it was through M&A, and he, he, he answered it in an M&A context, but or maybe organic development around more security functions, and he kind of said, well, never say never, but really focused, the team, the engineering team is really focused on backup and data protection and what they call data management. Juxtapose that now with, way, say, for, for instance, what a Daytream's doing. X data domain guys built their own file system trying to bring both primary and secondary storage together. Yeah, and which I like, and I think it's really powerful, 
Veeam's taking a different approach. They're saying and with, with Veeam APIs, we're going to partner with Pure, we're going to partner with, with Cisco, we're going to partner with Nutanix. So, different approach, and, and they're going to obviously you know, claim the same capability. Hey, we can do that too. You know, Datrium saying, well, we can do that too with the, just one mousetrap, you know, the integration points, et cetera. So it's going to really be interesting to see how that all shakes out. That, that word seamless, you know, like I said, it sometimes triggers me. If it really is seamless, you know, Veeam has a go-to-market advantage relative to you know, the, the Swiss Army knife approach. Uh, if it's not seamless, then uh, you know, a Datrium approach will have an advantage from a product standpoint. Now, you and I both know there's so much more to success than just having a great product. Yeah, even, absolutely, absolutely. You know, even uh, Rodner uh, noted Rodner that, said that and, and mentioned it. But, but here, here's, you know, it's interesting. Uh, one of the, when we talked about what will the roadmap, the practical roadmap, because Veeam has altered its roadmap in response to customer demand, quite frankly, uh, very successfully, and, 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 and uh, you know, you got to applaud them for doing so. But one of the things we heard was that, look, we don't want, we don't want to over-promise on the engineering front because you've got a certain number of engineers and a certain engineering capacity, focus them on things that are creating value to the problems that you're trying to solve. The same thing's true within a lot of user shops. You don't want to throw a whole bunch of new function and new requirements at a bunch of guys who are still themselves trying to evolve from backing up devices to now actually protecting data. Yeah. And, and so there's a, there's a natural evolution that's going to take place, and I, and I think Veeam has done a pretty good job of keeping their finger on what that pulse is. It's, it's what can be invented, but also what can be innovated if we think of in innovation as the customer adopting it, applying it, embedding it, and changing their activities around it. And I think Veeam's done a pretty good job of navigating you know, that what can customers really do right now, not getting too far ahead. So a lot of these guys, the, the natural tendency that you come from a product perspective and you say, put more into the product and you know, get the better check marks yeah. and you know, have the better, better statue, the better fact sheet. And I think Veeam is taking a, 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 a simpler approach, almost an Apple-like approach in an enterprise sense and saying, look, give them what they can handle, give them what they can use, give them what's going to generate value, and as they master that, give them a little bit more. You know what it reminds me of, is you said Apple, it reminds me of early EMC days. When EMC brought out, you know, it's Symmetrics, it, it was, it would connect to, you know, AIX, Solaris, Unisys, obviously IBM mainframe. It had all the optionality, all the connectivity, and that's kind of what, what Veeam is doing. And then the features that it announced were really practical, they clearly solved the problem. Now, since then, you know, EMC's evolved into the checkbox, right? We have more features than anybody. That's what happens when you have a user base. they have the customer base that everybody you, wants, right? right? You have the customer base everybody wants, and they say, check, we have that thin provisioning, we have that too, and you know, we're going to freeze the market. That's a you know, much more mature company. But, so, but sorry, in, their, in their defense, it's also in response to an increasingly specialized yeah, and, and complex customer base, they're trying to cover all the bases. And, and you know, competitive guys eating at their heels. Uh, absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and the sales guys saying, hey, we need something to absolutely, stop this. And, Absolutely. And they've done a great job of doing that. Uh, but, but Veeam is very, very focused on the optionality, uh, and, and for years they, they wouldn't talk about bare metal. I mean, a couple of years ago with Veeam on, the big thing was, hey, we said for years we're only virtualization. Well, guess what, now we do bare metal. That was sort of the, one, the big announcement one year. So they're, they, they're very judicious about how they allocate their R&D you know, capital. And, and you're seeing that you know, translate into function that actually gets used. Actually, get, yeah, and I think that's a key point. I think your analogy with EMC is actually really good, Dave, because if you go back 30 years when EMC first started getting going, what was the problem? Controllers on mainframes and mini computers were getting incredibly complex. It's, it's you know, the DASD controllers, and the amount of processing that was being put into that in the microcode was just overwhelming most people's ability to deal with it. And so EMC came along and said, well, if that's the problem, can we fix it? Can we put cash in? It'll just make this whole system simpler. And then they stayed true to that for a number of years and they turned into a behemoth. And it's interesting, I think it is a good analogy, because what is the problem? The problem is data is going to be more distributed, it's going to be more central to a company's mission, it's going to be used uh, by more functions and repurposed into more applications, 
that have a greater diversity of RTO and RPO, and as a consequence, they're saying, they seem to be saying, we're going to do our best to pull as much function into that protect side of things, local, as we possibly can, so that people who aren't PhDs in computer science can perform a real business service by making all that stuff work, and then we'll, at the same time, work very closely with third parties who can bring specialization of that secondary storage to bear as the specialization increases, because it's going to increase. Yeah. And the other, the other you know, kind of MBA case study example that I would point to is the early days of Veritas. When, uh, when Jeremy Burton was running Mark Marketing at Veritas, he sort of coined the, I think it was Jeremy, coined the no hardware agenda. Yeah. Right, pure software, a, a lot of function, and they you know, rose to a couple of billion dollar you know, in, in revenue, you know, very, very successful. Now have the big install base that everybody wants to eat. It's just, again, reminiscent, Veeam, pure software company, they're not shipping boxes, they're not shipping appliances, they're, they're not selling direct, they're, they're pure channel play. There, there's a big TAM to just continue to do virtualization. Like, the big question is, are they going to, uh, will their focus on what they're currently doing translate into focus on multi-cloud? And th th here at this conference, they're claiming yes. We've heard nothing that suggests that they won't be able to, but there's a lot of new players out there who are looking at that space and saying, you know what, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a lot of invention, a lot of investment, and you know, there's good reasons to suspect that Veeam's going to be able to evolve successfully, but there are a few areas where I think they're going to have to focus more time and attention. Yeah, it's a big part of a CEO's job is TAM expansion. And, exactly. and you know, right now they're you know, a billion out of 15, let's call it, so there's a, a long way to go. But as you point out, that multi-cloud appears like it's going to be lucrative and there's a lot of different companies coming at it from, from different angles. You got and, and today we look at it as this big blob. Yeah, well, and the reality right. is it's going to be incredibly specialized. It's very fragmented. I mean, you got Cisco coming at it from a networking perspective, Red Hat coming from a, from a PaaS perspective, Google you know, partnering everybody, Amazon uh, right now ignoring it, but you I guarantee they're going to be oh, in absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and Microsoft you know, has to be in it because of their huge estate of, of on-prem you know, software And there's a dozen security guys are going to be looking yeah. at this and saying, oh, look, data in motion, that's us. Well, that ServiceNow is going to get its piece of that's it. That's right. So, very interesting how that's all going to, going to shake out. So, okay, so uh, wrap it up, Peter. You know, kind of summarize your thoughts on uh, the space, Vmon. Um, so, first Vmon for me, a uh, lot of customers uh, that were talking about solving complex problems during their digital business transformation, that's always good to hear. Got to a billion dollars, that's a great milestone for any software company. Uh, good reason to suspect that Veeam is going to evolve into a company like Veritas, like one of the big guys. This is a company that's got legs, and I think that the final one that I'd say, or not got legs, but They've, they've got what it takes to be able to affect this transition. They probably got the execution chops. Look, we had a user on here who effectively said, if you're not using, if you're a CIO and you're not using Veeam, you're not competent. <laughs> and you know Basically what? Basically he said that. Yeah. That's, not, that's not a bad <laughs> testimonial when you come down to it. Yeah, and then the one thing that we have not talked about, which is, it, 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 it shines through, is culture. Yeah. You know, this company has a culture that is a winning culture, it's a fun culture. Uh, there's an accountability associated with it, and, and very customer, customer orientation. Focused. Absolutely, yep. So, that's yeah, a winning formula. It's been fun sort of watching these guys grow and, and interacting with a number of their customers, and you saw, you saw a couple years ago Veeam saying, okay, we're going enterprise. Well, it ain't so easy to just you know, say we're going enterprise. But and interestingly, even though they've somewhat retrenched from that messaging, they're having success in the enterprise, clearly with their partnerships with guys like HPE and Cisco and NetApp and, and, and others. Um, and so they're just going to let it bake a little bit and go from their position of strength, which is that you know, kind of S and then MB. Do more simply with your protection environment is not a bad story yeah. for a company of any size. Right, right. And, okay, Peter, hey, it's been great working with you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for watching. Guys, great job. Awesome. Uh, go to siliconangle.com, you'll see all the news. Thecube.net is where we host all these videos and you'll see uh, wikibon.com has all the research. Peter re recently wrote a great piece on, uh, on data protection and how that market's involving. Check out our, our Twitter, at Thecube. 
uh, and at theCUBE365, Twitter handles. You'll see all kinds of clips coming out of this show and other shows. Uh, let's see, we're, uh, we got a lot coming up. And, Last uh, word for you, and, uh, what'd you think? So, um, I think you're seeing, as I said before, a very practical uh, approach to gaining foothold and, and maintaining and growing in a market. I like the business model. Um, this, this company has been somewhat opaque, uh, you know, European based, you know, the Russian founders, um, but, and, and most of its business is outside of the US, and, and I think they're really coming into the mainstream now. And the cube and helps make it more transparent. Yeah, yeah absolutely, and you're right, because you can ask the questions of people and you, know, you, get, you get all kinds of different answers. So, uh, and we're able to have you know, independence on you know, guys like Justin, uh, uh, firms like the 451, guys like you know, Gartner coming on, and, uh, and it's fun to, to have those guys. So, so it's been great. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, the Cube, go to thecube.net, check out the events that are coming up. We got a huge, huge season. May and June are our busiest months. Take a slight break in July, although you know, we'll be cranking this summer as well. So thank you for watching, everybody. We're out. Dave Vellante for Peter Burris. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.